Raspberry Pi has launched this small little computer called the Compute Module 5 which completely fits in the palm of your hand. But can you just use this right away? No, not exactly. You need a carrier board like this on which you can attach it and use its capabilities. Now this carrier board is just the official development carrier board and there will be soon some more carrier boards that will come out which will allow you to use the Compute Module 5 for different applications which can be right from running it on a server rack or building your DIY NAS. So straight out of the box we have is this Compute Module 5 and this is the 4GB RAM 32GB eMMC version. The next we also have is this official heatsink that we will mount on top of the CM5 module. Next we have is this official IO board on which we are going to mount the CM5 module on it. Now let's go ahead and look at the various components that this board provides. So firstly we have these pins for connecting an external power button. Followed by that we have this PMIC enable pins to enable hardware based power control. Then we have the sync out pins for synchronizing the clock using external sources and then we have the pins for enabling USB OTG. Followed by we have these two pins for disabling EMMC boot and then we have the pins to disable writing to the EEPROM. Now next we have are these two 22 pin MIPI connectors for connecting a camera or a display. Followed by that we have this 40 pin GPIO headers in order to use the GPIO capabilities of the CM5 module. Next to that we have is this battery connector for connecting a CR2032 battery for the real time clock. Now for the display we have these two HDMI ports, next to that we have is this RJ45 port for connecting the Ethernet cable, next to that we have are these two USB 3.0 ports and then we have this USB-C connector for data as well as power. Next to that we have this SD card slot to connect an SD card which will be used for the CM5 Lite module. Now along with this we also have this M.2 M key connector in order to connect a full-fledged 2280 NVMe drive to this. Now next to that we have this 4-pin fan connector which is the same fan connector that is present on the Raspberry Pi 5. Now let's go ahead and mount the Compute Module 5 on this board and then attach the official heatsink on it. Now to keep the heatsink secured in place, you need to put in these spacers and then attach it to the board using these screws. So once the screws are in place, this is how the board looks like. Now let's go ahead and attach the NVMe drive to this and this is how the whole board looks like. Now we are going to power this board on and see the various capabilities of the CM5 module. Firstly, I installed the Raspberry Pi OS on it using the USB boot mechanism as this CM5 module has an eMMC storage on it. I then tested the NVMe speed after setting the PCI Express to Gen 3 speeds and I got speeds of about 871 megabytes per second. I then ran iPerf3 test to check the Ethernet speeds and I was able to get about 936 megabytes per second. Now I'll be making a separate video on how you can install the OS on the Compute Module 5 that has an eMMC storage on it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to see the full video once it is out. Now I wanted to see how the CM5 performs with the official heatsink. At idle, the temperatures were around 39 to 40 degrees Celsius, sipping about 1.5 to 2 watts of energy. I also ran the Geekbench test and I found that the CM5 module performs slightly better than the Pi 5 that I bought about a year back. Now I cannot definitely say where was this improvement from. I then ran a YouTube video at 1080p and it ran smoothly without any frames being dropped. I then ran a stress test using Sysbench and the temperatures rose to about 44 degrees Celsius. On prolonged stress testing for about 5 minutes, the temperatures reached about 60 degrees Celsius and then at 10 minutes, it went up to 65 degrees Celsius. Now this is with the board kept open at room temperature of about 23 degrees Celsius. Now during the test, it was sipping around 4.5 to 5 watts of energy without the NVMe drive connected to the board. Now when I got the CM5, I could not get hold of a heatsink with a fan. Now I remember when I bought the official Pi 5 case, it came with this fan along with the case. Now since the IO board has the same fan connector as the Pi 5, I used the fan and took some 2.5M screws and fixed it on top of the heatsink. The fan is a little bit crooked, but it fits firmly on the heatsink and does not shake at all. 
Now I ran the same test and after it reached about 50 degrees Celsius, the fan would start for about 2 seconds and stop. This went on up till it reached 59 degrees Celsius and then the fan remained on at very low speeds. There was no audible sound from the fan and the temperature started dropping. Now this is because of the default configuration of how the fan speed should increase based on the temperature. I then changed this to have my own temperature thresholds wherein I set these values in the config file such that the fan would start up at 40 degrees Celsius and then would run at low speeds at 45 degrees Celsius. With these settings, the temperature did not cross 47 degrees with 10 minutes of stress testing. Now when the fan would remain on at low speeds, I saw that the power usage went up to about 5.1 to 5.6 watts of energy usage. Now I will provide this configuration for changing the default fan configuration in the article that I will link into the description below. Now on shutdown, I noticed that the fan would turn on at full speed and stay on until I disconnected the power cord. I asked Jeff Gerling about this and he also faced the same problem so he created a topic on the forum about it. So we should have some solution for this. Next, I'll be making use of this adapter to connect SATA drives and see how you can use a CM5 as a NAS storage. So make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as hit that like button for more such videos to come. Now if you want to support this channel, there are links into the video description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.